Hello everybody, Peter of England bringing you another much awaited, I am sure, video. Um, we're continuing today on the um, escaping the trap theme, but what I'm doing is for the benefit of the people in the United States, of which we've got many members and many followers, I'm going to drill down on one or two things that are quite specific to the United States. But what I want to assure everybody else that's watching this video about is that what I'm speaking about today is exactly applicable to whichever country you are living in on the globe. Whether it's in Thailand or the Philippines or Jakarta or uh, as a city, it doesn't matter where you are, what I'm doing here is opening a, um, a series of boxes and hopefully portraying some knowledge that was probably not uh, in your sphere of aware awareness before. So that's really what I'm doing here. And what I'm trying to convey to you is that if knowledge is power, and what I'm saying to you is true, then this puts something into your hands that heretofore um, you didn't have. Because this is really at this time now on the timeline that the planet is, uh, is um, inexorably hurling itself uh, into the future on, um, we've either got to take control of the scenario that surrounds us, or we're going to have to just sit there whistling Dixie and just hope and pray that whatever's coming towards us, we like. And I can assure you, if you look back on the, uh, should we say, on the wake, that the Congress and the Senate and the people who supposedly have been looking after you since uh, 1760 or 1770, uh, then it doesn't paint a very hopeful picture. And I would think that if we were to look and assume that the future uh, would be better than the past, then um, I think we're in for a big, big surprise. So today I'm going to cover something that probably none of you have, uh, have heard of before. Um, I've known about it for a while, but didn't think it was so necessary to cover it. But it's just an example, again, of the degree of cover-up within the global political elite, and especially in a country of 340, is it 335, 340 million people in the United States. I wouldn't think there was more than a handful that know about the organization that I'm going to speak about today. So get a pen, make some notes, or go over this video um, several times, because what I'm looking to reveal here is the sheer hypocrisy of the control grid that is the United States Corporation. Now, in the previous videos, I've covered lots of detail there, and this is called Escaping the Trap, part one, part two, two A, three, and four. For those who are new to this uh, channel, please go and look at those particularly, if none other. Um, so what I'm really going to cover is the influence of Europe as it's pushed over and taken control of the United States and totally captured it from, let's say, 1931, 1933 with Roosevelt's Gold Confiscation Act. So from that point in time, the Federal Reserve foreclosed on the United States Treasury and played into the hands of the European bankers and the royalty who had set their sights on capturing that beautiful jewel in the crown. Full stop. That's what they wanted. That's all they wanted. What I'm also going to try and do or not try, I'm going to uh, elicit um, a, an action that I think you should be very willing to take, and that is really ridding yourself of the 435 people in Congress, plus the 100 senators that are controlling and seemingly controlling your destiny. Now, what I'm trying to do is, is portray this, this control grid that really came out of the, the square mile of the city of London, and following, I think it was the, um, it was the, Residence, Residency Act, I think it was the Residency Act of 1790, even then Masonic influences were fully established and set up in the United States. And the evidence of this is the um, Washington DC uh, constitutional allowance for what is called um, Washington DC, which was to be no more than a hundred uh, 100 square miles, I think it was. So basically what we have is a 10 by 10, 100 square mile, a 10 
times larger area for the Masonic influences and the people who are controlling the City of London square mile to translate that unit from London over into Washington and basically wherever you have this uh, square, square mile, uh, the symbolism of the compasses, the set square, you have got Masonic influences. That's not new to any of you watching this, I am sure. But what I'm actually focusing now on is these people. There are about 320 or 340 million of you in the United States. There are around 100, 500 and I'd like to get to a number of 555 for some numerogi numerological reason, which I'll explain to you in a moment. But that number is really made up of the following. We've got 435 people uh, in Congress called congressmen. We've then got another 100 in the Senate. Then we've got the Supreme Court justices. We have got a seven-man board of the Federal Reserve. We've got the Speaker of the House, who doesn't have to be a congressman or a Senate senator, I do believe. And then we've got the President, who doesn't also have to have been a congressman before he's been elected to, to office. So that's bringing in us at around a 553. I don't know where these other two could come from, but really that's what the controlling mechanism is in the United States. I'm doing another video after this for the benefit of the people in the United Kingdom specifically and those in the Commonwealth countries. So the significance of why I think we need to get to this 555 number is significant, significant because it's wrapped up with the 666 numerology and the, the various aspects of the, um, I think it's uh, Revelations 13, 18, um, the mark of the beast the 666 symbolism. So if any people who are interested in that, then they need to refer to the, the following video, which is coming over um, specifically addressing the United Kingdom. So what we have is these 555, give it or minus a couple at the moment, do, are controlling the 320 million. If you look back just 100 years, the taxes that are levied on you now from licenses for passports, licenses for cars, licenses for guns, licenses for gasoline, sales taxes. None of those taxes were evident a hundred years ago, probably not even 60 years ago. So the politicians, the people in Congress, it doesn't matter which side of the aisle they're on, they're all juiced in and they know that they're being paid by an external operative, which is the IMF and the Bank for International Settlements following the bankruptcy. So they bemoan, they bewail the fact that they don't want to put up taxes, but do. They moan and bewail that they want to protect the American citizens, but they send their sons and daughters off to military campaigns in faraway places from Lyndon Johnson's time to Monroe before him, the doctrine that basically they are manifesting destiny and have a responsibility to the world to intervene, which is a crock. So what I want to deliver to the people in America, whoever can get this to into the hands of somebody, uh, that has a, a, a desire to change, the knowledge that I'm giving you here is the way that you need to facilitate that change. Because if you know of these things, the people standing in front of you uh, manifesting this, this air of importance and authority and power and ritual, you will see them as no more than just cardboard cutouts two-dimensional images, people who have got no, no soul, uh, uh, or people who are only really serving their own best interests. So the mirage or the illusion or the fata morgana of power is nothing more than that. It's just an illusion. Okay. So where do we go from here? Um, what we like to do is now I'm going to show you that we had these, we had the 435 plus the 100, which was uh, 5, sorry, 535. Five. Then we've got the nine Supreme Court justices. We've then got 
seven members of the Fed, oh, Feb, set for the Federal Reserve. Then we've got the Speaker, and then we've got the President. So I think that comes in at five 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 three. That is probably a useful number to try and get towards, because uh, for those people who aren't aren't aware, for example, I think the obsession with this. 120 volt, 220 volt, this is Europe, this is the United States, and what we have here is this running on a 60 hertz cycle, and this running in Europe and the UK on a 50 hertz cycle. There is this constant obsession with numerology and it's no coincidence, and if you look at the effects of what's called um, incubating eggs or uh, embryos in 50 to 60 uh, hertz f magnetic fields, you will see that it's quite a de deleterious and not a particularly healthy pastime. Uh, and every house in the United States is being bombarded with a 60 hertz frequency within its womb-like structure and the same in the uh, United Kingdom uh, and in Europe mainly it's running on a on a on a 50 hertz okay so that's a slight side side track now but what I want to to go on to now is I want to share something with you that I think many of you won't have heard of before so for those who have please make a comment. For those who haven't, please ask the question, why? How can such an agency not be known and be as familiar to everybody as the FBI or, or the CIA? And that agency is the Senior Executive Service. So, in the, in the UK, um, Britain, in the Empire, as was, the senior service was always referred to as the Navy. The Navy has a pastime of being a permanently standing force since the 1300s or the 13th century. And the reason for that is that in times of war, people can be mobilized very easily to campaign on land. All you've got to do is get the people together, give them a, a, a dustbin lid as a shield, and give them something in their hand to attack the other side with, and most people can function quite well with that. However, as far as a boat is concerned, there's aspects of navigation, there's a, a, a aspects of the, the rigging, the seamanship generally. So they, they very soon, monarchies very soon realized that they had to ca ca keep permanently a standing naval force in position to fulfill any needs, uh, and particularly when Britain or England was always at war with France or Spain, etc. So the senior executive service, You've never heard of them, I don't think. There's eight, three, two, eight, Korea, full-time Korea. Civil servants of the executive branch of government. These eight, three, two, eight, sit over and watch 75 government agencies. What do I mean by that? Well, these are career civil servants. They're paid the same as people within the Congress. They're on between 160 to 185,000 United States dollars per year with a possibility of them being given uh, bonuses of around 10% and then another of 10% for services over and above the, the calling of their uh, office. It's like basically a, a job well done bonus. Okay, now they are career civil servants, therefore they are not put in place by Congress. They're not voted for by the Senate. 
They are just there and they are permanently there. Career means just that. They can be there for 30, 40 years. And so this is the continuity. This is the hidden hand in the glove. This is the hypocrisy of the Senate and the Congress in the United States when people like Biden and Obama and Trump and uh, Carter and Reagan, they come and go, but these people stay there very nicely in the back. The ranking for these is the, the rank of flag officer in the military. And that means someone who has got the right to display the flag next to his desk or wherever he is in the world as a representative of the United States government. So what I'd like to do is now show you the seal They've got their own seal, like all these governments, uh, departments. So whether it's the FBI, whether it's the TSA, whether it's the Department of Homeland Security, whether it is the Department of Justice, whether that is any other government agency that controls your life in the United States, you have got approximately 111 of these people somewhere within those departments. So you can imagine this army, this full-time army here, and this is the, I think, actually I'm not sure, I actually think, no, I think it goes this way, okay? And what we've got here is seven bars in the middle here, and I don't know whether that represents seven chakras, I don't know whether it represents the seven members of the board of directors uh, of the Federal Reserve, um, however, it could be a, a symbolic representation uh, of uh, the Jewish candelabra, which name I have actually forgotten uh, right now. But um, it's definitely got some mystical aspect to it. And if anybody knows what it represents or can suggest, then please put some comments down below. Now, as to... The control, where it's coming from, senior service is the Royal, or was the Royal Navy. Was it two, two Vs? I'm not sure. The Royal Navy, the senior service. So it's got a British influence in it. It's also got a very incredible European influence in it. And by that I mean, if you see the flag, this is the flag of the Senior Executive Service. And apart from what's parked in the center, it's a 13-star representation of the European flag. And nobody could deny that, I don't think. So the question needs to be, since uh, I'm not sure whether it was around 70, sorry, um, 19, I think it's 75 or 78, roughly when it was officially formed, um, these people um, are a permanent background supervisory force to the 555 number that I was trying to get to before, and as I say, we're a couple short. Um, and what these, these numbers are based on, these, these stars in the sky, they're representative of the Sumerian, Babylonian, Anunnaki, uh, sexagesimal system, whereby Anu at the top of the food chain uh, was 60, and then it went 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10 to the bottom. And for example, the wife would be at 55, the next one down uh, ranking at, at 50, his wife would have um, a, another number. And so the representative of the pantheon within this Babylonian Anunnaki uh, establishment was, was always fixed and it was always constant. There could have never be more than the 13 in the, in the control, uh, uh, in the pantheon. So what we've got is we've got this, this hidden the hidden hand behind the government. And these are the people who are making the decisions, they're controlling everything, 
Uh, why are you not aware of this? I will be very interested just to find out uh, who has heard of it because I never have and it was only, uh, as I say, by chance or, or um, uh, serendipity that I came across it and I've looked into who and what is behind it and it's quite an amazing functional force. So the who controls you in the USA, we're coming back down to homing in on the IMF, the Bank for International Settlements, the Rothschild, Rockefeller, Warburg banking families who are trying to now through the, the devices of people like Janet Yellen convince you that the debt ceiling and the potential shutting down of the corporation can be saved by the printing of a one trillion dollar coin. I mean, this is like, uh, it's just, it's just amazing. It's like an Austin Powers movie and uh, the, a mini me, you know, it could be a quadzillion, a trillion type coin that they could, could save the day with. So you can see they're making up as they're going along. The main emphasis that I want to, to throw at you here is you've got to be able to understand a little bit of this knowledge um, and have it available to you and by absorbing it or feeding on it, it will give you a much stronger component when you have to confront particularly members of the judiciary, members of the, the police and the sheriff or marshalling departments. It's a mechanism of taking some of these notes and actually either passing it to them or informing them, however you see best to do that, that they are being taken uh, um, advantage of they're being hoodwinked, they're being conned. And so where we're moving with all of this is, as I said before, there are two ways to bring down, and this is what this information is. This isn't for entertainment value on a Saturday afternoon. This is not just because I want to get a degree in history or impress people for a, a podcast or whatever it is. This is the rubber hitting the road and it's time for action to take place. So if we're not preventing any action, if we're just uh, being, uh, if we're just sitting there and acquiescing in what they're doing, that's tantamount or exactly uh, acceptance of it. If we don't want to change it, then they'll carry on doing what they do. So the mechanisms are, are in place uh, but what we need now is a catalyst. We need a catalyst to fire up this rocket or to ignite this powder keg. And it's not by going on the streets and causing uh, problems uh, for businesses or for the police or, or destroying property like the Antifa, uh, Antifa and the BLM movement and the LBGFGAQ movement and all this woke nonsense. Um, what needs to be done is People coming together in groups, being steered by some of the information, and a lot of this is, has come from, um, should we say, uh, areas or um, libraries that are not accessible to you through just because you read Time magazine or you, you search on Google or whatever. This is a historical fact, and there is a very, very large, intricate, vicious, patriarchal, uh, territorial, uh, astrologically predictable group of beings who are in the background, who are, are vicious, uh, of um, non-sympathetic mind and disposition towards you, who will sell you, your family and the planet out because they don't believe in anything other than themselves. They've tried to force onto you the one-stop shop theory. You're down here for 60, 70 years. It's dog-eat-dog. Dog, but if you do eat another dog, you're still a dog and you're never going to escape from it. You're the rat on the wheel and all hope needs to be abandoned. So they should probably have over the Congress written, uh, abandon all hope, all ye who enter here. So that's the message. 
you need to turn to a different mechanism, a different way of fighting within this system. And really, the fighting doesn't become fighting hand-to-hand -hand type combat, but it means a way of dissolving the illusion that's portrayed to you every single day in this two-dimensional reality of pieces of paper floating all over the place, telling you, you have to do this, you have to pay that, there's this, there's that, there's the bank. It isn't a 2D world, it's a 3D, 4D world out there. And with your help, I would like to take you there and show you more of it. So if you like the video, make sure you like it, but please pass it on to other people. And if there's anybody out there that has a large group of people in the United States, could be the United States military even, that have just had enough of this affin theater, enough of this craziness, then let's begin to do something about it. And it can start with the slightest ping of the vibration on that glass can cause it then to shatter. So if you like, well, as I say, uh, do the notification and uh, whatever you do at the end and get ready for the next one because that's for the people out there in the United States, sorry, in the UK and the Commonwealth. Peter of England saying thank you very much.